Tales of the Jedi Knights of the Old Republic is a two-part story that takes place a thousand years after the events of Golden Age of the Sith and the fall of the Sith Empire, about 30 years before the Knights of the Old Republic game, and 4,000 years before the events of A New Hope. It was the first Tales of the Jedi story to be published, and is comprised of the stories Ulit Kaldroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon, and the saga of Nomi Sunrider, two characters who would eventually become two of the most important people in the history of the Old Republic, and both stories were written by Tom Veach. Ulit Kaldroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon is a two-issue story that follows Ulit Kaldroma and his brother, Kay, and Tot Denita when their master, Arka Jeth, sends them to Onderon at the behest of the Republic after being made Watchman of the Onderon system. It's an interesting system, and given that this story came out before the prequels, it would have made sense to have the Jedi Order already spread out throughout the galaxy, rather than centralised the way it was in The Phantom Menace. Onderon itself is troubled. The capital city, Isis, is a large city with a massive wall built around it to protect the citizens from the Beast Riders. The Beast Riders are either criminals or the descendants of criminals that were banished from the city. Once a year, Onderon's moon comes close enough to the planet that Drexels, large winged creatures native to the moon, can fly from the moon to Onderon, similar to the Lunar Crying Final Fantasy VIII. The banished criminals then tame these monsters and use them to travel, to hunt, and over time, to attack Isis. These are the Beast Wars of Onderon, and the reason Queen Amanoa has called the Jedi to Onderon. When the Jedi arrive, the Beast Riders stage a kidnapping of Princess Galia, so the Jedi set out to find her. When they do, it's revealed that she wasn't actually kidnapped, it had been faked so she could marry Oron Kira, the son of one of the Beast Lords. In the beginning, it all comes across as very Romeo and Juliet, but as she tells the Jedi how they met, she reveals that the entire city of Isis is under the influence of the Dark Side, and has been since the former Jedi, Freed and Nad, discovered Onderon four centuries before. Frieda Nad was a fallen Jedi, and very important to the Tale series, even though he isn't in it too much. He became ruler of Onderon, and declared it would forever be isolated from the rest of the galaxy, so that he could rule the planet without fear of Jedi interference, and anyone who defied him would be branded as a criminal and cast out of the city. So the people who were criminals, the Beast Riders, weren't actually criminals. They weren't thieves or rapists or murderers, they were, in fact, the good guys, opposing Frieda Nad's rule and the dark side of the Force, which was a twist I wasn't expecting. The Jedi and the Beast Riders return Princess Galia to Isis, and Queen Amanoa becomes so furious at her plans of marriage that she unleashes the full power of the dark side that had been taught to the bloodline of Freed and Nat, trapping the Jedi in darkness, both literally and figuratively, making it hard for them to see and giving them feelings of oppression. They escape. Total war breaks out between the city and the Beast Riders, and not for the last time in the Tales series unfortunately, Kay gets his arm chopped off in a scene that I thought was actually pretty funny. Kay dropped his lightsaber and it fell through the leg of a soldier, and instead of screaming in pain, he just grabbed the lightsaber, pulled it out and chopped Kay's arm off. I'm not sure why I found it so funny, maybe it's because of the soldier's complete non-reaction to pain, or the fact that Kay just stood there there, while the trooper had enough time to pull the lightsaber out of his leg and attack him with it. I don't know, but I thought this scene was hilarious. Master Arka arrives, and once again the entire battle is won with battle meditation, and even though this is the second time in three books that battle meditation won the day, it didn't bother me because Knights of the Old Republic was the first of the Tales series released, so technically this was the first time it had been done. The Jedi then head to the tomb of Freed and Nad in the palace where Master Arka's mere presence forces the darkness to flee, and Queen Amanoa is killed because the dark side was keeping her alive, and with her death ended the 400 years of darkness and war Onderon had suffered. The newly crowned Queen Galia and Oron Kira were married, officially ending the Beast Wars of Onderon. 
The final page shows Kay fitting a robotic prosthetic to his arm while Master Arca warns of the threat of the followers of Freed and Nad who still remained in the city, and Ulic Heldroma questions how a Jedi can fall to the dark side. Master Arca replies by telling Ulic that it has happened more than once, and the final panel focuses on Ulic as Master Arca says, Pray that never happens to you. A dark omen of the things to come in the Tales series. Ulic Haldroma and the Beast Wars of Onderon was an enjoyable story with a couple of twists and turns and it set up the Freed and Nad uprising nicely, but it didn't have the most depth to it. To be fair, it was only two issues long and the first tale was story printed and it was the early 90s and the series did get better with time and where it lacked depth, Tom Veach has used that time to do a bit of world building and show the state of the galaxy as it was 4,000 years before A New Hope. The art was good and set what would become the tone for the tale series with pencils by Chris Gossett and colours by Pamela Rambo. The art was good but I do think it didn't have as much detail as other entries in the series but that's to be expected because the tale series ran from 1993 to 1998 and comic art went through a lot of changes in that time. The Ballad of Nomi Sunrider is the next story, it's three issues long and was definitely less impressive, just as important, but nowhere near as enjoyable. The story starts with Nomi Sunrider, her husband Ander, their daughter Vimmer, and protocol droid 3D heading off planet to visit Master Thon and give him some Adigan crystals, which were considered to be the best crystals for building lightsabers. Ander is easily the worst Jedi ever. Sure, Anakin's whiny, and those guys who went with Mace Windu and Kit Fisto just stood there while Palpatine used them as a pincushion, but Andor wipes the floor with them all. Andor dies because when a group of muggers try to steal his crystals on the orders of a hut, he's bitten by a lizard in a fight. A fucking lizard. Master Thon clearly trained him well. So Andor dies and immediately comes back as a force ghost and tells Nomi to pick up the lightsaber, which she does and manages to kill all the muggers without being killed by a lizard. She then takes Vimmer to Master Thon to deliver the crystals and to receive training from him because her dead husband, who Thon trained oh so well, told her to. Nomi trains with Master Thon in everything except lightsaber combat, but his home is attacked by the rest of the Hutt's thugs that Nomi didn't kill when she was mugged, at which point she predictably picks up the lightsaber, defeats them and that's that. The story itself isn't very interesting, but there were a few things about the comic that I did like. The first thing was 3D, and while his name sucked because it was the 90s and 3D was a massive thing back then, I even used to walk around with the red and blue glasses on all day, I did like the fact that because he was an early protocol droid, he had a much more organic look to him than anything we see in the movies. Since the story is only set about 40 years before the Knights of the Old Republic game, his organicness and the state of the galaxy seem to be more different than I would have expected, but that's not the this comic's fault though. That fault falls squarely on the people who developed the game and decided what the setting would be like. It's not Tom Veach's fault that after this comic was made, the developers of the game advanced the universe so much in such a short space of time. I also liked that we see Master Thon showing Nomi his holocron, which was lent to him by Master Arca, the master from the first story in the book. Not only was it Master Arca's holocron, but it also had Ud Benar as its keeper, a Jedi we will see again in the Tale series further down the road, as well as in the Dark Empire trilogy, and a member of a species called Neti, a race that comes from Merka, a planet first introduced in Heir to the Empire only a year or two before this comic was released. Tot Denita, the Twi'lek Jedi from the Beast Wars story, also makes an appearance, asking Master Thon for help defeating the Freed and Nad Uprising, a story told in the next trade but that was very clearly set up in this trade. It's also worth noting that Vimmer Sunrider was the great 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 grandmother of Vimmer de Boda, the mad old Jedi woman from a few other stories set many years later, including the Dark Empire trilogy, the Crimson Empire saga and the Han Solo trilogy. 
I don't think it's ever explained how Vimma de Boda could possibly be that old, because it's hard to think she's just the great 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 granddaughter of Vimma, since she's in the books and comics set at the time of the original trilogy some 4,000 years after the events of the book. It does show that even back then they were trying to focus on tying things together, so thumbs up for that. Disney could learn a thing or two. Vimma Sunrider was also supposed to be Basta Lashan in the Knights of the Old Republic game, something that was made about a decade after this comic was released, but according to Chris Avalone, the lead designer of Knights of the Old Republic 2, there were legal issues with using the name Sunrider, so they weren't allowed to use it. The final thing I liked was the Black Lake. It was a lake that was filled with the dark side, and it's similar to the cave in Empire Strikes Back. It whispered evil thoughts into Nomi's ear, and she had to protect both herself and Vimma from its seductive and dangerous power. It was an okay story. When it shines, it really shines, but a lot of it is very boring and mediocre. It's still worth reading though, because of how it ties in with the rest of the tale series, and the effects it will have on the other books. It's just not very good on its own, it's more of a crutch for the other stories. Pencils were by Janine Johnston in issue 1 and David Roach in issues 2 and 3 and colours were by Pamela Rambo and just like the story it was a bit of a mixed bag. There were some places where the art was pretty average, sometimes it seemed like nobody can decide what Nomi Sunrider's face should actually look like and I don't think the Babylon 5 hairstyle she has helped with that. Sometimes Inca Mike Barriero has used thin lines, sometimes he's used thick lines and there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for it so it's very noticeable and distracting. There were some very cool moments with the art though, it wasn't all bad and I liked the images of Nomi activating her lightsaber or when she's standing with Vimmer because that seems to be where the most care has been taken with the art. The cover art for both stories was very cool and done by Dave Dorman who also did the cover art for the Freedom Nad Uprising, all the covers for the Dark Empire trilogy and all the covers for the Crimson Empire trilogy and if Wikipedia is to be believed, George Lucas is a big fan of Dorman's art and has bought dozens of Dorman's original oil paintings, although it doesn't say whether that's limited to or even includes his Star Wars work, but I'd imagine it does. There is another version of this trade available that was only sold in England, Tales of the Jedi, the collection, plus the Freedom Nad Uprising. It's a hardcover graphic novel collecting all five issues from the Tales of the Jedi Knight of the Old Republic trade and both issues of the Freedom Nad Uprising comic series. Because this was only available in the UK, it comes from a UK publisher called Boxtree. I find it interesting that for once, we got the better deal. So often you can't find the good stuff in England, only in America, and it's certainly never made in England. All the good Star Wars stuff, America gets it first. Given that the Freedom Nad Uprising is only two issues long and directly follows and ties in with the stories in this book, I can't help but feel like it was silly to release it as its own trade, and since Knights of the Old Republic already has two stories in it that are two and three issues long, they may as well have just included Freedom Nad since it's two issues. The actual trade of the Freedom Nad Uprising actually looks pretty stupid on its own, I have it from Dark Horse, and because of how thin it is, it looks more like a child's book than a graphic novel, and in my opinion, didn't warrant its own release. That being said, there is enough included in Knights of the Old Republic, it just seems odd to leave it out and give it its own release, especially considering how well it ties in with the two stories that were included here. So overall, I thought Knights of the Old Republic was okay, but not great. If you want to get the most out of the rest of the series, then I definitely recommend reading this. It's essential for understanding what comes next, but I don't think I'll be going back to this one for a while. It's not bad by any means, but on its own, it's not great either. The art is good, but not the best in the series, and the stories are good, but not the most dynamic, but they both serve a purpose in setting up what will come in the Freedom Nad Uprising, Dark Lords of the Sith, the Sith War and Redemption. 
Tales of the Jedi Knights of the Old Republic is the cornerstone the rest of the series was built on, and at only 5 issues long it won't take long to get through it, and I would say while it's not the strongest entry on its own, it's an absolute must read if you're planning on reading the rest of the series, and that means you should read it, because reading the Tales series is something every Star Wars fan should do.